Hey, Twitch. Hey, everyone. AM and AM here. The show's changed today. Yeah, it's also dead with AM and AM, AM today, yeah. apparently. Nikki just didn't make it, so. Yeah, she didn't make it. <laughs> like on the seaplane? <laughs> That's right. Oh, wow. I died last week. You died last week. These are the ghosts of AM and AM. We The plane went down. We didn't make it. So sad. Uh, no, we survived the, the seaplane, I think. Uh, maybe we're still in the seaplane and we don't know. No. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. Oh, you think so? It's Halloween. <sighs> well, I don't feel like myself today. No, you don't look like <laughs> yourself either. This is, this is really uncomfortable for me. It is? Yeah. Should I take the glasses off? No, they look great. That's it's, what I it's a, You know what? Let's, let's go through. Are you giving yourself compliments right now? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm so surprised. Halloween costumes, Superman, Wonder Woman, firefighters, what? nurses. Oh, it got what really just spooky. Happened? It got really spooky. I think the lights turned off. Oh my god. This really is Halloween now. <laughs> there we go. I better? think there's a ghost in here. There's a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a ghost in here. It was like spooky time story uh, <laughs> story setting. Uh, no, so Superman, Wonder Woman, firefighters, nurses, this is what people dress up for Halloween. You dress up like your hero for Halloween. That's what you do. I get it now. You're no. dressed as your hero. I understand. I finally get it. <clears throat> Sometimes you dress up as other people to make fun of that person. Mm. I just like to pose an alternative to dressing up as your hero. No, I think it's Sometimes hero. you dress up as the villain. When I was a little kid, I was the scariest freaking thing on the block. <laughs> I, uh, Literally. I'm going to go with a hero. I think it's hero. Um, well, in today's world, this is the scariest thing for me. So So, uh, what is the, wh what are we doing? What, oh, what? right. We're, we have an episode to get through. Well, yeah, but what is this show? <laughs> if, if you've never tuned in, to, what, what are you tuning in for? <laughs> well, last week, this was called Live with AM and Nikki. Yeah. Today, now, I can't say the same. Now it's dead with AM and AM. Um, we, uh, we've we been walking Halloween. you through how to build a, uh, a modern web application every single week, if you've missed us. Um, and this show is for everyone and anyone that wants to learn anything about AWS. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or programming in general, too. Just, yep. just coding, making applications. If you're new to development yeah. or you've been developing for 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is, um, this show is for everyone. We're a... Uh, you can't even there's take so this many, seriously. There's so many good comments right okay, now. Okay, wait, tell me what they are. Uh, well, but but we're both app devs by by practice, right? So we're here to <laughs> try and help you uh, in your in your struggles, just like we've had struggles and continue to struggle with app development uh, problems. And specifically, we're working with AWS uh, uh, technology to do that. Uh, I love the Git clone AM, but I think it's more. Of I a, was just gonna say I woke up this morning and typed Git clone AM. It's more and of then a. I showed up. It's more of a Git fork. Let's say that. Oh God. I think you've you you forked the repo. Oh, because I'm missing the facial hair. Yeah, there's no facial hair. Um, you just don't have the full AM flavor either, you know. Oh, but you God. can't bottle that. <clears throat> you can't get to it. So cocky. It's it's so it's cocky. just something you can't get to. Um, what are the other comments? The other comments are... Uh, what will we learn next? Oh, we should talk about what yeah, we're going to do today. what are we going to learn next? Uh, so we, if you've watched the last episode, we finished building our modern web application. So today is going to be more on analytics of that application, like capturing user click activity um, and being able to do something with it. So being able to analyze the activity that's taking place on that site that we built. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what better service to use than Kinesis, too. So we'll be talking Kinesis today. We will be talking Kinesis, and we will be talking serverless today. We're going to use a Lambda. Serverless, my favorite. My favorite, too. Yeah. Of all time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Changed how I how I think about development when it came out uh, with Lambda, right? I was the first... It's exhilarating. First time that I was like, huh, okay, I can actually like not go bug the people over in ops, right? I remember for a while the serverless movement was was calling, uh, calling it no ops, right? Mm -hmm. Which is not 
true. There's still some ops to it, but I, that's that really attracts. Also, me. saying serverless is sometimes confusing. It is, yeah. We'll we'll get into that for sure. I have a Halloween poem that I wanted to share. You have a poem? Is that to I make didn't up write for the it. fact that you did not dress up today? I did. I wore my shirt. It says. Uh, I've been dying to meet you. Yeah, I've been dying to meet you. As in yourself. It's the haunted mansion from 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 Disney World or Land. It's still not a costume. It's you it's, failed. It's great. I don't dress. All up right, let's in hear your costumes. poem. My Halloween, I didn't write it. I just memorized it. You memorized something for the show? I did. Guys, you should seriously feel complimented. Yeah. He doesn't even memorize the commands for the show. No, I don't. Why would you memorize commands? There's no. Oh, but the poem is important. The poem is very important because it conjures some some spooky stuff. Okay, let's hear this poem. All right. Before the lights go out again. Yeah, I know. The lights are going to go out. (laughs) As soon as I finished the poem, it would have been what? What if I had finished the poem? Lights gone out. That, that would have been, been awesome. Yeah. Uh, black cats and goblins and broomsticks and ghosts, covens of witches, with all of their hosts. You may think they scare me. You're probably right. Black cats and goblins on Halloween night. Happy Halloween. Oh my god. That's what you say right before Michael Myers comes and, and kills you. Really? Yeah, that's that's the poem at the beginning of Halloween, the movie. That's terrifying. Yeah. But also great. I felt like it's I also, was in second grade when you started saying Well, poem. it's recited by children. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> that's even worse. Go rewatch Halloween tonight. It's a great movie. There's a new Happy one Halloween, too. guys. Hopefully you're celebrating. Went and saw it. It was awesome. All right. <clears throat> so, All right. Getting back to what we're doing today. Yeah. Yeah. That was a well, nice Well, what actually let's talk about what we did last week just to recap for a hot second. Yeah. And how did we follow along? Uh, I think that's probably the, the biggest oh, right. question. Currently. If you want to follow along, we have a branch uh, specifically for .NET because we've been building this in .NET um, in a GitHub repo that AM is going to post in the chat. Just did. Wow. I'm fast. AM posted in the chat. I'm fast. Yeah, that's past tense there. Past tense. Uh, so, cool. Uh, yeah, we, if you want to follow along, there's a specific .NET branch too, right? Yeah, we, this uh, this tutorial is also in Python right now, and I believe Go and Java are on the way. Yeah, they're they're currently under development. You can see it in the in the repo where they're at. I haven't checked in a while. Yeah, me either. Yeah. C sharp. That's 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 me. Uh, we're also watching and monitoring chat. So get at us, right? Come, come yeah, talk to us. Yeah, questions, comments, concerns. Uh, post them all in the chat. Favorite we- Halloween movie? Favorite scary movie? We're welcome those two. Also, best Halloween costume award. We should take a vote. You guys uh, should all vote on this because <laughs> I should win instantly. Here's based the great on the fact part. That I dressed up. If you win, I still win because you're oh me. <laughs> Everything you do today is me. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I have. I didn't dissect that. Let's process. let's wait. Let me rephrase. Not everything you do today is reflective of me. Everything positive you do today is reflective. Oh, of just me. because you want anything nothing negative. Negative. So if I screw up and the code Nikki. doesn't work, yeah. it's all my fault. Or you go crazy on the stream or something. That's all you. <laughs> but I, anything I disagree. positive. I'll I take. I cloned you to this morning. Uh, so it, you're to blame. You forked. You, you get forked. forked. Whatever. Whatever. Oh. It's in the details. All right. So, today, we, we have some goals. What are our goals What are today? the goals? You want me to go over the goals? I do want you to go over the goals. So, first, we're going to learn how to process clickstream data, right? Using Kinesis. Using Kinesis, but we're going to have to put something in front of Kinesis because we're getting that clickstream data from, uh, from the client application, mm-hmm. from the browser specifically, right? So you, you don't want to just hook into Kinesis directly, though you can but with Amplify. But then you would have to use AWS credentials. Well, but no, you actually can do it with Amplify, where you don't have to have any any layer in between. Amplify, the library, will help take care of that uh, and, and accessing it with the roles that it sets up for you. And it's as simple as Amplify add analytics, right? Mm. And so you get access to a Kinesis stream, you can push stuff up into it. I don't think we did it that way. We didn't. We didn't. We set up an API gateway that then uh, is a pass through to a Kinesis Firehose stream. So yep. it's a little different than a Kinesis stream itself. We'll get into that too. Uh, so we're going to do that, right? And then eventually those those events will get passed to a Lambda and then get stored in S3, right? The yep. Lambda, you can do a lot of stuff with. We'll see what we did, but there's a lot of options. A lot there. of options. We're also, since there's a Lambda there, we're going to get into writing uh, a C-sharp 
lambda and what tools yep. are available for writing that C sharp lambda. Kinesis is just going to ingest the data. Yeah. And then it will go to a lambda where we will do something with it. And then it will be deposited in S3 bucket. But there are a lot of tools for working with .NET. Uh, we're going to see one specifically for the .NET CLI. Ah, my favorite. Yes, that's my favorite too. Um, and then we'll update the front end. It's a very simple way. I already wrote a lot of the code. So all you have to do is update a, a variable in configuration file. That's about it. I'm ready. All right. So what did we do last week? Last week, we uh, added authentication using Cognito, but really Amplify to set up Cognito into our application so that users could register, sign up, log in, all, all the authentication things. Right. Um, what else did we do? We had uh, two locked down new paths that we added, and we added the API gateway Oh, we gateway added the ability to like and adopt your misfits. Right. But we had been calling the, the load balancer directly, but now we've got... An API gateway sitting That's in right. front of that. We're going to have a separate API gateway actually today for our clickstream too. Um, but we added the API gateway. Um, we added two more like and adopt two paths to that API. And uh, they were authorized. Those are the ones that are locked down, right? Yep. To you have to be signed in, in users only. And my code. Uh, horrifically failed and, and would not right. work. Yeah. Nothing I'm worked. I'm not going to forget that. Except for off. Auth worked because oh, work. luckily I was using Amplify. Amplify has got your back all the time. All the time. Um, cool. So so I'm on my own today because I didn't use Amplify. Yeah, yeah, you're on your own. Nobody's got your back, not even me. Well, I have your yeah, back. Yeah, well, technically that doesn't really make sense. I am you. Yeah. Uh, so, cool. Um, you want to talk about some of these concepts? Yeah, let's do it. So I know that there's three parts to Kinesis. What yeah. are those three parts? There, there, there are three current kind of sub-products within Kinesis. That's right. Um, there's the Kinesis stream, and that's generally, if you've ever worked with Kinesis uh, in the past, probably what you're thinking about, right? That's, that's, that's probably the one that, uh, that you've seen or used in the past mm -hmm. because it's, it was what was released when Kinesis was first uh, released. What it is, is it's data ingestion, right? Real-time streaming data ingestion yep. service. Uh, if you've worked with other services like uh, Apache Kafka, for example, it's very similar to that. Uh, but it, it's got a lot of differences, too, uh, that you have to be aware of when you're, when you're writing applications that utilize the Kinesis stream. What it is, on one side, right, this side, you've got a producer. And what that producer does is it generates data or it yep. pulls data from somewhere it's the thing that is going to push the data into the, the Kinesis stream, right? Then sitting in between, right, in the middle is the actual Kinesis stream. Yep. On the other side is uh, a consumer. So when data comes out on the other end, whatever, you can have multiple consumers. You can have a ton, right? Uh, there's best practices around how many you should have <laughs> versus how many uh, streams and shards in that stream you have, et cetera. But... On this side, you've got, and again, you get a multiple producers on this side too, and multiple Like a streams. web application or an IoT device or Absolutely. a mobile phone. And there's a lot of uh, things to help you work with producers and consumers too that, that we've built at AWS. Like there's the uh, Kinesis agent, which is pretty neat. Um, it mm. just watches files and folders. That is really cool. Um, so it's probably the, the most minimal setup that you can have when working with Kinesis Stream. There's also the KPL or Kinesis Producer Library, mm. which is a it's wrapped. It's like a bunch of C code that's wrapped in a in a Java wrapper. So um, it's 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 best to work with Java, uh, but you can you can also access it from other languages too. Um, there's interop operability in Java directly though, so if you can, yeah. uh, it makes your life a little. So where easier. does Firehose come in? Firehose is uh, so think about. Those, those concepts that I was I was talking about before, like sharding, and you've got these partition keys That's and things like things. this, and, and uh, kind of you have to manage uh, how how the data gets ingested and things like that. So less and scaling it. it's more granular. Firehose is just managed for you. Ah, we like that. Of course. We like everything that's managed for you. But the caveat to that is there are three delivery streams. Um, so on the other side, 
there's, there's only three consumers. There's not, right, there's not custom consumers like you have, although there's kind of ways that you can do that with Lambda. But the three targets that you can send data to guess. then. Go S3. For it. Okay, yeah. Redshift. Yeah. I don't know the last one. Elasticsearch. 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 Yeah, so those are the three targets where your data will end up eventually with Firehose. You have to pick one. Yes. Um, and like I said, you can also register, which we did. We're actually using Firehose in this, amp uh, in yep. this application. Uh, you can have a Lambda sit as uh, a trigger event. When you get a record, and then you can send that record to... Uh, to Lambda. So you can use that Lambda to like transform the data or actually reject a record or do a number of things before it goes to those consumers. You can actually go store the record somewhere else too. That's right. You can store replicated data in another database. Yeah. Or Dynamo, right? Um, Dynamo. And then analytics, Kinesis Analytics is, is for using both Stream and Firehose uh, and, and running SQL queries against the data in those. While it's inside the stream. Yeah. It's pretty wild. That's pretty cool. Um, so you just create these SQL applications in the console, and there are a bunch of blueprints and things, and 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 already uh, templatized. So you can actually watch the data as it's being streamed if you're running queries against. Yeah, it. and there's different types of 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 uh, there's like tumbling and a, a, a sliding window uh, because data is it's not like a traditional database that you're running right. SQL queries against. Um, data is constantly shifting it's underneath moving. you, right? Uh, so when you're working with a regular database and running SQL against it, there might be some changes to the data, but you're not not like this, right? Where right. there's changes every second. So um, there's different ways to uh, to run analytics against these streams. Um, so we picked Firehose because it's managed. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we're not doing anything horribly complex here, right? We don't nope. need a whole lot of uh, custom producers. We don't have custom consumers. We're uh, just ingesting user running. clicks. That's right. And then dumping them in an S3 bucket. They hit a lambda on the way. Yeah. Um, so that we can analyze where people are clicking on our site. There you go. So uh, <clears throat> what is serverless? Serverless. <laughs> oh, I just asked question you. Of the uh, day. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So it? it doesn't mean that there are no servers. That's a common misconception. Um, the word serverless means it's serverless to me, as in I am not setting up servers or managing infrastructure. I am just able to run code that I need, and everything else is abstracted away from me. And that's really the true meaning to me. And there are three, like, three things that define serverless, and they are you pay as you go. Yeah, that's important you to me. You only pay for what you need. When so, I look at a service to judge if it's serverless, that's one of the first things I ask, right, is am I going to pay for idle, right? Idle time. Yes. Where my my you do application not pay for idle time anything. with serverless. Right. Um, the second thing is, um, you know, it's really hard to predict user traffic and how much traffic you're going to receive at certain points in time and to ramp up for that. Um, but this scales automatically for you. And so you do not need to make those kinds of predictions. Um, so user traffic predictability is very difficult. And with serverless, it's not a problem. And then the third thing, what's the third thing? I'm like blanking. No infrastructure. That's right. Obviously, I said that. No infrastructure to manage. Serverless. Right. Serverless to me. I am not setting up a server. I am not managing infrastructure. I'm not crying when it dies. I'm not waking up at 1 a.m. to fix it. None of those things. Um, you might be waking up at 1 a.m., uh, but not to fix the... Uh, to probably because you figured out some some bug. Okay, okay. That's a side note. Okay. Let's not get into my sleeping habits. Uh, code. LASIK88 said uh, serverless equals someone else's server. Yes. That's a good way of putting it. That is a good one. Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. So serverless uh, really lets you focus on your code, too. Yep. Instead of how your code runs, which is important to me. Uh, I don't I don't care so much how the code that I write is deployed. You just want to write the code. I just want to write the code. Same. Probably go home after that. <laughs> you probably go home and then continue writing the code. That's right. I'll just go home. You just go home and stop. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> At five or six or seven. Uh, sometimes eight. Depends. I'm more passionate about coding. That's a, that's a fact. Yeah, that's probably true. So we've got... Kinesis in one side, which 
is, is, is the data ingestion portion of our serverless application. We've got Lambda yep. running our code, right? So what is Lambda and how is it serverless? It's kind of the backbone of serverless, right? Yep. It's a, a way to create serverless functions and applications. A service that we offer that provides a way to create serverless functions and applications. Now, if you're creating a serverless application, there might be more pieces involved in different AWS services that you use in conjunction with Lambda. But today, we're just creating a Lambda function. Right. So it's just going to ingest the records from Kinesis, do something with it, and then return it back to Kinesis. There you go. So Taha is saying, I hope you guys compare against Azure for completeness sake, like Azure Functions, etc. Uh, I'm not an Azure expert because I work at Amazon. <laughs> uh, I used Azure a long time ago. Uh, I used Azure a long time ago as well. But yep. I, I have not kept up Three with what years ago, Azure probably. has been doing. So I'm probably not the best person to compare services. Yeah, if you want to call something out about this note, a difference that you notice, uh, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. So should we get started? Or are you are you watching the chat? I'm watching the chat too. Distracted. Um, it's it's. Lasik also says, or LASIK, I'm not sure which, uh, testing and debugging are not always easy in uh, in Lambda or serverless applications. That's what X-Ray is for, right? Yep, that yeah. is what X-Ray is for. Um, X-Ray, it will, if you add X-Ray to your serverless application, it will show you the stack trace of where it failed um, anywhere in the application, which is great. Yeah. It's for application debugging, serverless application debugging specifically. We're I having, agree with you, though, that sometimes it is. debugging is it's difficult. It's tough, yeah. Um, yeah, and there's there's some ways to run functions locally. There's yep. uh, SAM local, if you've ever worked with the SAM CLI, um, serverless application. I don't know what the M stands for. Serverless application model. Model, yeah, there you go. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, SAM CLI is a good way to package up uh, and deploy applications We've got some .NET CLI tools that we'll look at here, too. Um, we, uh, we have extensions for the .NET CLI, if you're familiar, and we're going to use those extensions today to deploy our Lambda. Yeah, yeah. So combination between X-Ray and then uh, even if you're working in something like uh, .NET where uh, maybe running with SAM local isn't supported or doesn't work uh, very well, uh, I don't think it's possible. You can still go to the, the underlying Docker container that yep. Sam Local is using called Lamb CI. I think I'll find the link and I'll post it in here. And you can run uh, a Lambda function locally yourself too. Uh, what gets difficult is then attaching the process uh, that's running in a C Sharp application. Yes. But uh, there may be some things on the horizon to help out with that coming at some point. Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully. Just saying. Come to know. reinvent. Yeah. Yeah. Reinvent will be an interesting time to see all the things that are coming. But All of them. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. What do you want to start with? Um, so, I think first we need to make a code commit repository. Code commit repository. You got it. Yeah, right. What is code commit? Code commit is private Git repositories okay, in cool. your AWS account. So, before we start into it, let's just review, recap for anybody joining right now. Um, we're going to build a serverless data ingestion. That's right, to capture service. user clicks on our modern web application that we have built the last five episodes with you um, so that we can analyze what people are doing on our site. That's right, that's right. And we're gonna use Kinesis. Because we wanna know. Yeah, well, it helps you improve your, your, your business, right? Yep. We're gonna use Kinesis, we're gonna use Lambda. We're also going to use CloudFormation too, which we we've used use throughout the, the series. Um, CloudFormation, our CloudFormation template is going to help us create some of the resources that we need in AWS that we've talked about, like the API gateway endpoint, right. the Lambda function uh, once we deploy it, uh, That's right. the Kinesis Firehose, all the things that we need. That's right. So uh, you say we start with code commit. I'm going yeah. with you. We start with code commit. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So let me open my code commit's uh, going to store our, our our lambda function code. I assume. Am I right? Yes. Okay. We're gonna. So we're going to create a new repository in code commit, and then we are going to copy over the files from the tutorial, specifically the lambda folder, which is under streaming underscore lambda, 
and then we're going to copy over the CloudFormation template. We're going to save our work because natural developer, uh, you know, thing to do is to save your work after you've copied over files. And then we're going to deploy it and see if it works. Sound good? Sounds risky. I well, like risky. Let's do it's, it. It's risky because you never know if it's going to work. So, uh, Okay, so we're going to call AWS code commit. And then the command is create repository. And then you have to give it a name. Uh, mythical misfits streaming dash repository. How about that? Sure. All right, let's do it. Invalid choice. Create repository. Did you spell didn't spell it, spell it wrong? right. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Spelling counts, right? <laughs> Computers, uh, they make you spell correctly. Fail. Because they only failure. do exactly what you tell them to do. Yeah, I know. Computers are dumb. Okay, I created it. There you go. Now I got to clone it. Uh, but the link is right here for me, which is great. Hey, we got a compliment. This Twitch stream is really good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Liza. I'm taking that compliment. Yeah. I'm Wait, taking it. I'm you today. Uh, Dang it. I'm taking it. Dang it. Two times today, actually. Uh, uh, this is, we're finally giving the people what they've been demanding is uh, just two AMs, right? Where did it go? Nobody's, nobody's chiming in found. and saying that they actually demanded that, by the way. Okay, well, the repository is not found even though I just created it. Ugh, I know why. Because you have to sign in, don't you? No, it's because um, I specified a different profile in my Git credentials for code commit, so I need Got to change it. that right now. Got it, yeah. You've been working on some other projects. I have been working on some other projects. Uh, where is it? I thought you only worked with me. I know you like to think that, but it's actually not true. That hurts my where pride. Is it? Oh, it's in Git. Saved in Git. Somewhere. Git config. Where is it? Ha! Here it is. There we go. See, we got to change the profile <laughs> default. Ooh, free Git credentials. Yeah. True. Yeah, there's no Git credentials in here. It just says it's a helper uh, that you write to be able to have your code commit credentials. Right, right. Uh, I have to create that repository again because now I created it in another account. Really sorry, Kirk, if you're watching. <laughs> He's probably not. Uh, this is not for capturing Twitch streams, by the way, uh, Garana M6. It's for capturing click streams. Uh, so when users click on uh, UI within our application, it will log that data, what they clicked on, to a Kinesis stream. Well, Kinesis Firehose, technically. Uh, so cool. We're uh, looks like we're up and running. Oh, I gotta. Uh, you gotta clone the repo too, right? I no, did clone did. the repo, but now I have to go into it. Got it. Got it. Got it. And then I got to copy over the files. Okay, copy over the. So files. the files are sitting in module five because that's the module that we're working in today, not six five, and they're in a folder called streaming. Come on. I'll be sure to. Uh, uh, Dodo Playstyle, be sure to let Nikki know that there were credentials uh, that were accessible so that she can get rid of those. Great. Thank you. Uh, streaming Lambda. No worries, Garana. Just helping you out uh, figure out what we're actually talking about. Cool. So you, you're copying the, the actual Lambda code over. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm missing something. Okay. There we go. Wait a second. Let's use tab. Let's use my my lovely friend. Tab, tab. completion tells you when you're uh, in the right place because it, it won't auto complete. Ha, I got it. No, that was it. Okay, so we're copying over the Lambda function and all the files with it into our new repository. Right, yes. Then we have to copy over the CloudFormation template. Yeah, there's a cloud formation template. Which we're going to look at in a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look into what that's actually setting up for us. So the cloud formation template is in a folder called CFN. Um, and then we're also going to copy that to here. Perfect. Oh, you want to copy just the, uh, I'm missing just the template. Hit that tab. 
Oh, you are, okay. Copy in every one of Got it. Yeah, it, it's just the template in the file. But anyway, so now we should have all of our stuff. So we have the function, all the files that came with it, and then our CloudFormation template is called Real-Time Streaming JSON. Okay. So now what do we do? Now what do we do? We got to save. What are we saving? We, we, we just created a repository and put all the files in it. We got to save them. You mean commit? Yeah. Oh. I've never heard anyone call it save. That's interesting. Whatever. Same thing. I'm not, I'm not trying. I, I just, that's, I, I'm, new term for me. Please work. Yes. It okay. worked. It worked. So we need to look at the code. So let's just see what it is that we're doing with yeah, these things before we deploy it. Yeah, you just committed a bunch of code. I don't even know. What, what, what is this code doing? Well, let's look at the code, what the code is doing, and the CloudFormation template. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, so let's start with code. So it's just a .NET Core function, um, and it's processing Kinesis Firehose events. So the event get passed in right here, Kinesis Fire, ah, Kinesis Firehose event. And then what we do is we log a bunch of stuff, and then we actually create a Kinesis Firehose response, which is just a list of Firehose records. We create that response because we're going to add to that response, and then Kinesis is able to pick that up and pass it off to S3 once we're done. So we're going to loop through the records that we received through this event. So I misspelled event, but not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you misspelled it everywhere else, too. I did. That's good. I don't know what I was thinking that day. Anyways, uh, you loop through the records. I logged a you bunch were, of stuff from the records. You're making a new startup name. Like that's how that's how you make a start. You remove you just remove the vowels. vowels. Yeah, and then now you've got a new You're startup. Right. That's exactly event. what I was doing. That was my uh, my objective. Yeah. So um, I create a new record object to create a transformed record because what we're going to do here is we're going to process the records and then we're going to change them a little bit and then put them back into Firehose. So let me get this straight. This lambda is invoked, right? Fired Bye. every time. A record enters our Kinesis Fire yes. host stream, correct? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. <clears throat> uh oh. Wait, are these It could be C multiple events at once though that enter. Got it, got it. Are these C sharp lambdas? Yes, they are. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> Most definitely. Absolutely they are. Uh so all we're gonna do is we are going to parse the click event. So we're gonna decode the data. It's encoded in base64. And we're going to create a new record uh, called an enriched click. So from the click event, we grab the misfit ID, so the ID on that mythical misfit, and the user ID, so who clicked. And then what we do is we use that misfit ID to actually go um, hit our Dynamo table and get that misfit so we can get other data about the misfit. And then we create a new click object with the user ID, so the person that clicked, right. and the stuff that they selected from the misfit. So the ID, whether the misfit was uh, their good evil status, their species, and their law chaos status. Okay. Those are their alignments, by the way. Their alignments. It's d and I told you all about this like two episodes ago. Right. And you refused to go learn about d and um, No, I didn't think it was worth my time. <sighs> so hurtful. Anyways, I think on. you are evil chaotic. Uh, Probably. That's your alignment. Most definitely, actually. I think everybody would agree with you that knows me too. That's uh, that's the Joker. Wait a second. Probably. If you just called me that, that's calling yourself that. I'm also evil chaotic probably. Oh, okay. Just clarifying. Yeah. So then we encode the data back. So we put it back into its base 64 uh, form. And then we add the record to Kinesis. And Kinesis will just pick it up and then dump it in an S3 bucket. Because that's, that's right. the... Con, uh, consumer that we've chosen for our fire hose. Yeah, could be Elasticsearch, could be Redshift too. Right. right? Um, so let's look at the cloud formation template. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, so so far, we've created code commit. We've uploaded this asset. We added code, our lambda function and all the correct. files with it. And our cloud formation. And our cloud formation template. template, and then we pushed it into a repository. Right. And uh, we're not actually going to trigger anything from that repo. That's just no. We're just saving it there. Right. That's just to uh, practice good, good coding hygiene. Right. Probably is how I. In put case that. we did change something or uh, manipulate this a little bit to do something else, we need it in our own Git repository. 
You know, in addition, Brandon, uh, Brandon just commented this, and I think he's 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 inspired me. Oh no! Uh, oh in no! In addition to this Something little sand timer coming. thing, we totally need a twenty sided die. Oh yeah, we do. To roll, uh, to see you know outcomes. Absolutely. Right. He he says roll one d twenty to. Uh, I want an eight ball too. Eight, oh, yeah. magic eight ball. Is this gonna work? No. No. It's always definitely new. not. He said, "Roll a d20 to see if if I could dodge that D&D insult, and uh, I got a crit miss. Let's just say that. <laughs> I don't that, even need to roll. Is that a die that you use in a D&D game? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's okay. there's like 800 different uh, dice that you use. It's that complicated? It's very complicated, yeah. It was a game made by nerds. What do you think it's going to be, simple? No way. Uh, nerds, we don't, we don't make simple things. No, it has to be complicated. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess since I'm you today, I can spend some time learning about it. There you go. I got sucked into that. But tomorrow, I'm going to delete it all from Lambda's in C-sharp, so cool. I agree. We think it's super cool, too. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Uh, you're going to love the tools that we have for deploying our nice. Lambda, too, by the way. Best tools ever. Cool. So, so cloud formation. So, cloud formation. Sorry, I, I sidetracked you, but... You did. <clears throat> so, we copied it over comments. to our repository, and it is called Real-Time Streaming JSON. So, this is our uh, cloud formation template. Um, we have some parameters that we're going to give it. looks like one we already have a default for. That's our core stack. Okay, so that's the in stack a previous that we created episode. earlier. Yep. Yeah. I actually think we created a stack called Mythical Misfits Core Stack Twitch, specifically for Twitch. Got it. Maybe you should. did. Yeah. yeah, I probably did. Um, and then this is our fire hose. So we're just creating our Kinesis fire hose. Uh, did you see? That's where we're uh, we're deciding extended S3 destination configuration, right? So yep. we're, we're picking S3 as our destination. We picked S3 right here. Um, what else is in? So go up know? a little bit. To buffering here? buffering hints. So this is the interval in seconds that the stream will send data to your your S three bucket mm -hmm. that you can configure, and also the size, size of megabytes. So once it gets about fifty megabytes or sixty seconds happens, it should send it to S three. Yep. That's how you control that. Yeah, you can change those numbers. Uh, if we go down to, so the bucket, clicks destination bucket. I don't know which one of us this is to, but Clock Tower Power says, uh, uh, you're like a skinny TJ Miller. I think he means you. <laughs> it must be me. Uh, I like TJ Miller. But, Wait, but if it's me, then it's you. He, he kind of went It's up, both of us. He went up the deep end there. Uh, he's, he's a little crazy now, but I love TJ Miller on Silicon Valley, at least. You watch that, right? Yeah. He's I've early, right? Yeah. Yeah. He did go off the deep end, and then he's been MIA in the last, like, four episodes. Yeah. Five episodes. I like the skinny <laughs> part, by the way. Uh, I'll take that, for sure. Skinny TJ Miller. Um, well, he must be talking about you, because you have the, the beard. Yeah. Yeah, but he has the... He cuts out this part of the beard, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll have to think about doing that. No, don't do that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, okay, so continuing on, that, that's just an AIM role that we're creating for yeah. fire hose. Yeah, you have to have uh, authentication or uh, uh, authorization to go do. Yeah, this your stuff. role has to have um, fire hose access, S three access, so right. the ability to put stuff in the bucket, get the bucket, um, and then also has to have uh, lambda access to be able to invoke the function. So it's got to have all those permissions right. on it. It's definitely um, not the most exciting part of it. No. Yeah. It's just authorization. And then the Lambda function. Yeah. Check out this runtime. The person that was excited about C sharp functions. .NET Core 2.1. That's right. The cool thing about that is that Lambda, when Microsoft releases a new version of .NET Core, uh, the Lambda team will release the availability for the runtime usually within six weeks of its release. So we stay very up to date with .NET Core, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, we're creating the function. Look at that. Look, look. What? We're setting an environment variable. We are setting an environment variable that we use. I can actually tell you exactly where In that is. In the function code, yeah. So when we call the, uh, we call to retrieve that misfit using the misfit ID, um, the API endpoint is just coming from the environment variable. Yeah, we're actually calling our own, uh, 
our own API that we created. Yep, in previous episodes. And I don't know if you knew that you could create environment variables with Lambda, but you can. Yeah. So that's super cool. cool. Yeah. Going back to the cloud permission template. Uh, more permissions. Boring stuff. Roles. Boring, policies. but necessary. Boring, but necessary. Anyways, this is the CloudFormation template that we are going to use to create uh, the whole thing today. I love this chat room today. What's happening? Uh, it's funny. I'm missing everything. It's funny how AWS named the auth roles IAM after AM. <laughs> they did. They totally did. I should actually... Dang uh, it. How do you make it so that everything gets named after you? That's, some, uh, that's brand infringement, I think. They're infringing on my brand. But it's okay, oh, so I work you're, here. you're going to sue? I work here, so I'll let them have it. I'll let them have it. Just this one. Just this one. Mm. You can have them all. You, all right. You're also brand infringing right now. This is very much a brand. Are you going to sue me? I'm going to think about it. You're thinking. Your dad's a lawyer, though, so yeah, I probably I don't, don't know want if you want to mess with me. No, my mom is not a lawyer. My sister's not a lawyer. My dad will come after you if he's watching right now. Yeah, my mom and sister are watching. I know that. Maybe the, my sister can become a lawyer and then represent me when I sue you. Oh, so you're just going to wait? But then there's the statute of limitations. So it's how true. long are you going to wait? It's true. Alan Michael images. I love it. AMI. <laughs> oh, my God. Everything in AWS is now named after you. Stop giving him this stuff. This is we great. need to stop. This is wonderful. All right. I think we should deploy this guy. Yeah. So let's look at the, are we going to look at the .NET CLI tools? We are. Sweet. Right now. Okay, so if you've ever used the .NET CLI, you may have used it to do things like run your .NET application, build your application, clean, um, all the normal things that you do in .NET development. Right, create a new uh, application based yep. off a template. My, right? One of my favorite calls, .NET new dash all. And then if I scroll up, these are all the templates that you can create a new application in. You're about to show some spoilers, I think, if you keep scrolling. Oh, uh, already? Yeah. Look at those templates. Guess what? AWS has some templates, too. We do. Yeah. So we have Lambda and serverless. So these ones are going to be applications. So you can create an ASP.NET Core web application that is entirely serverless or an API. And then these are all just uh, functions. Yeah, that's pretty nuts to me. You could run a full Razor templated MVC app <clears throat> in a Lambda function. Craziness. It's bizarre. It's super weird, but I like it. I do it all the time. Uh, I don't do it all the time, but MVC, it, it's pretty MVC, those ones you should probably know if you're familiar with .NET. How do I get those templates? The, uh, the Lambda ones? Yeah. You have to install the .NET Core global tools. How do you do that? You actually can just call .NET dash g tool and then you have to call the name of the tool which i don't remember exactly i'm gonna i'm gonna link I'm gonna it pull the link for you. i'm gonna link it i almost memorized that command dot net tool dash g or is it g dot net tool dash g which means global install and then you just install the name dot net tool install dash g i almost got it amazon dot lambda dot tools so here is the uh i was close here's the command here's the actual uh oh no. That's the phone tool. Uh, here's the actual Git repo uh, where all that lives. Yep. Uh, so what else can you do with the .NET CLI extensions? With the .NET CLI extensions, uh, type in .NET Lambda. Just Lambda? Just enter. It's going to tell you what you can do. Deploy function. That's We're going to use that one today. Invoke function, list functions, delete, and then we have all these serverless ones. Yeah. we got to shout out Norm, right? Shout, Shout out, out to Norm. Norm. These things are awesome. Yeah, Norm Norm builds uh, builds this stuff. He's on our, our .NET tools team here at AWS. He builds the best tools. Yeah. He's cool. Well, Steve Steve also builds really cool tools, That's too. That's a valid point. Yeah. Um, should we deploy it? Yeah, let's deploy it. Let's do it. Uh, okay. I'm actually just going to steal this full command from the readme. Uh -oh. I'm going to pull an AM move. You can pull an AM. You are AM. You're dressed as AM. You're going to act so, like AM. It's a long command uh, because we're pulling the Misfits API. Okay. Let me show it to you. One sec. Oh, this is this is one of the commands that I wrote. This is one of the commands that you wrote. Yeah. Because I don't like going and fetching uh, things out of the move console. So I, I just had the CLI do it for me. Let's see if it actually works. What do you think? Oh, we got to make a bucket first. Yeah, you got to make a bucket. We can't call this yet. Right. True. Uh, yeah, control U. You got it. 
Um, make bucket. What are we making a bucket for? We're making a bucket for. Um, it's the zip the, file. Yeah, it's, right? it's where all the actual code is going to go. That's right. Yeah. So our actual deployment package that gets created automatically. Automagically. By the .NET CLI tools, uh, it gets uploaded to this S3 bucket and then is referenced again automatically. What do with... you think about my bucket name? I love it. It's great. You like it? It's it's a long bucket name though. So long... well, it has to be globally it's unique. True. Globally so. unique. All right. All right. Cool. It's thinking about it. Go. It's judging your it's taking a long uh, your time. bucket name actually. Hmm, really? Yeah. It doesn't like it. Oh, it did it. It made it. Cool. Okay, I need to uh, paste that command again. Cool. There you and go. And I need to replace it with the bucket name, which is the one we just created. Mythical dash misfits. It is really long. I shouldn't have made it this long. Streaming service. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Are you going to say a prayer? Uh, it's Halloween, so a prayer to Satan. <laughs> An incantation. Let's let's say a spell. Oh wait, I already see a a problem. It's right here. That template is not in a folder called CFN. It's just in the the root of this. Got it. Uh, Got it. Got folder it. Now. That's what happens when you copy commands. All right, let's see the rest of it. It looks good to me. Shall we go? I think you should click enter. That way it's your fault if it doesn't work. Did you click enter? Fortune favors the bold. Oh, it's working. Um, so we've got some chat, too. Uh, Questions, comments, concerns? Comments, mostly. Uh, my wife is, is watching today, apparently. Uh, <laughs> How did you know? Because she said, go ponyo. And that's what she calls me. <laughs> so she told everybody on the stream to call me Ponya, apparently. His wife is really smart because she totally guessed that I was going to dress up like, like AM. She also said, I love the costume, Nikki. Thank you, Taylor. Um, they're upset. The tall pants, specifically, is, is upset. I don't have a Halloween costume. I'm upset, too. I'm equally upset about that. Uh, Disappointing. What if, what if AM and Nikki were turned into misfits? At the end of the stream. What if? That'd be pretty sweet. Oh, yeah, I guess if the lights just go off again, you won't know if we turned into That's misfits. true. We're actually getting uh, updated progress of the CloudFormation stack from this tool, which we I are. love. Me um, too. So. Create in progress. That's what's happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, 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 it built our C Sharp project. It did. It packaged it into a zip file the way that it needs to be packaged. I didn't have to figure any of that out. Nope. Like, where are the DLLs? How do I zip the DLLs up together? Nope. Which DLLs it, do I include? It pulled them out of the bin folder. It's all done, right? All, all done, done for you. me. And then uh, it uploaded it to that S3 bucket. Yep, and it's creating the CloudFormation stack. That's right, referencing that S3 bucket with my zip uh, deployment package. Yep. It's going and creating my function. Yep. And then once it's done, we just have to update the front end, and then I think we should test it. Oh, see if yikes. it works. It might. We'll see. I just would like to point out that if it does work, my code works, his code fails. Let's just emphasize that. Well. And that's when I'm me, not that's him. That's really hurtful. <laughs> but I think you're channeling the inner me right now, uh, since you're dressed as me, and that's why everything's going really well for you. Oh, yeah. What happened to you last week? I don't remember last week. You need to just erase from your memory? I blacked out the entire episode. Great. It's gone from my memory. I don't know where it well, is. Well, let me remind you. You wore this shirt. I did week. wear that shirt. Yeah. I'm really surprised that you uh, you, you you committed and bought. That's probably one of my favorite this shirts. This is a Kenny Loggins shirt. If you, I don't know if you can see it. It is a Kenny Loggins shirt. It's also very appropriate for Halloween. It's got that pentagram on it. It's appropriate. I agree. Uh, it says Highway to the Danger Zone. I love that song. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's great. I also love Top Gun. You love Top Gun. Yep. Okay. It's one of my favorite movies. You don't. You don't watch any movies. But I watched you love that Top one. Gun. Yep. I did watch that one. This is really interesting. What we're God, learning. And here. you know what's really cool is like when you have like a surround sound system and then you play the movie and it's just like everywhere. You just watch the volleyball scene, don't you? That's all you watch. <laughs> just the volleyball scene on or, repeat. Or the motorcycle scene. Or the motorcycle. Okay. Do you like are you a big Tom Cruise fan? Um, in that movie, in yes, that movie. not okay. in general. What about Days of, 
Oh, R.I.P. Goose. Spoilers, Brandon. Oh, stop. That was the worst part of the whole movie. It literally made me cry. What about Days of Thunder, Tom Cruise? You ever watched Days of Thunder? No, I've never seen that. He's a race car driver. What mm. about Cocktail, Tom Cruise? Nope. This is like like prime Cruise era. Still the no. 80s. The 80s, was, that was a it's, great it's time Top for Gun. Tom Cruise. Um, okay. What about the Mission? We we went and saw the Mission Impossible movie together. We did. Uh, I love that Justin movie. Justin and Taylor. When he broke his like ankle. Yeah, yeah, he was in that. He was great. Yeah, when he jumped from one building to the other and then broke his ankle. Uh, that was the best part. Tall Pants says, you guys do a great job distracting from cloud formation slowness. <laughs> Thank you, Tall Pants. <laughs> you know, uh, good things are worth the wait. That's what I'll say. Me too. You know, at this point, if I was just coding and working in a... Uh, legend. Brandon. Brandon called out Legend, the Tom Cruise movie. I've never seen that one. That's a... Uh, uh, this oh. is a good time to go get a coffee. That's, that's my wife's. That's say. Taylor's favorite movie. Uh, legend? With Tom Cruise, for sure. Maybe of all. Uh, it's... Oh, Taylor, if you're still watching, there was a Law & Order uh, marathon on TV last night. She's a big SVU fan. I know. I, I, I was watching the regular one, though. Oh. She doesn't care for the regular ones. So oh, got it. It's SVU or nothing. It's all uh, <sighs> Ice-T. Ice-T sells that whole show. You gotta watch it. Yeah. It's great. Well, I like the old one. And Brandon, he does have that with weird middle tooth. His uh, his tooth, Tom Cruise's tooth. What's wrong with his tooth? It doesn't line up. You're kidding me. Yeah, you should look it up. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Oh, no. So, not one of these things. Yeah. Just keep that in you mind. You always ruin it for me. I didn't ruin it. Brandon ruined it. It was Brandon. Let me double he still check still has that. his weird middle tooth. Okay, I have to actually investigate that after the show. This is taking a while. <clears throat> At this point, you probably should just go get a coffee and then come back. <laughs> we could go look at the front end while this is going, too. We can. Yeah. And go at least to see what we're going to update. R.I.P. Weird Fiddle 2. He fixed it? Oh, man. I didn't know Cruz fixed it. He fixed the middle tooth. But you can still find evidence of it. Uh, find, it like, an old exists. photo of him? Yeah. Let's go to the front end. Remember, we got that Angular project. We do, and we have that deploy script. Yeah, well, it's great, though. We don't have to deploy it yet. Don't we have to update? Yeah, we just update one. File? I made it really easy for you, uh, for those following Oh, look, along. there it is. We're just going to drop it in there once we have it. That's it. That's all you got to do. Where's the prod one? You haven't created it yet. Uh, I got to create it. So you got to create environment.prod.ts first. Oh, look, it finished. Oh, nice. Good timing. Can you use the uh, Angular oh, tay -tay. CLI for that? Best Haunted Mansion shirt ever. He's still disappointed without a costume, <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, can you use the Angular CLI to create a new environments file, or do you have to just manually No, you it? just make one. You may be able to. You may be able to generate it, but just make it. You don't even just do it for the get UI and do Okay. Just click into that environments, click new file. There you go. Environment. Uh, not plural. Ah, uh, gotcha. Dot prod dot ts. And then just copy the other one? Yeah, just copy that one over. Uh, you'll probably have to change your Misfits API URL because that's the local Yeah, one. so this one is the streaming API endpoint that just printed. That's the streaming one. Where did it just end? Uh, Execute. Hold on. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but it goes into... No, it doesn't. That's your... That's your oh, okay, uh, you're right. That's your... There you go. Got it. And then the other URL, it printed <laughs> actually up here. Uh, uh, Chuck needs to scrub his hard drive or uh, because he Googled Tom Cruise middle tooth. <laughs> You'll never unsee it. Are you sure I should Google this? No, probably not. That's, okay. That's the only thing you got to go update. Now I got to deploy it. Yes. You can deploy it with Amplify, with uh, the hosting feature in Amplify. But or you also wrote a script. I wrote some scripts, yeah. Where is your script? It's uh, keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. Deploy front end scripts. Ah, there it is. Okay, let's reference it. There you go. Tab's your friend, right? Tab is my friend. That's all I gotta do is just run it, right? Hit enter. Uh-oh. Failed. 
Cool. Am I missing an install? Node modules. It should run that. No such file or directory. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta install first. I did this in case you didn't have the Angular CLI. So run NPMI. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's good to know for me to go correct in the tutorial. Yes. We'll update that in the readme. Yeah, so then you don't even have to run NPMI. And then run the script. And then it'll deploy. I need to learn from Norm's tools. To do it for you? Yeah, Norm's tools do all that for your C sharp code. All right, let's run this guy again. Okay. Now it'll work. Now it's building. This might take a minute too. So while that's going, what have we done so far? We created a code commit. Repository. Repo to store. Just to like save our work. Just to keep our, our function uh, code with development best practices. Good right? best practice, absolutely. Uh, we reviewed our cloud formation, created and our And the .NET screen. code yes. of the, the Lambda function. Yes, so it created our Kinesis uh, firehose, it created our Lambda function that connected to it, yep. and it created the bucket and also pushed our data into the bucket from mm -hmm. the firehose. Um, and then we used the .NET CLI extensions to deploy. Yeah, to actually deploy that stack. Um, and then we also updated our front end, which I believe it just finished. Now done. View your project here. Command click. Oh, no. Uh, it's probably because my bucket isn't public. Yeah. Problem with the bucket. Always. Bucket R. Whoa, man, I got called out. Of course the script that AM wrote failed. Woo. Catching did, a little heat. Did someone just write that? Catching a little heat. Yes. The tall pants, you, you're yes. your biggest fan. Well, at least I have a fan. We can't say the same about you. I think we have the biggest fan of AM sitting right next to me. <laughs> or I dressed up like this to make fun of you. Sure, yeah, we'll go with that. Like I said, you often, you often dress up on Halloween as your hero, so I'll take it that way. All right, let's go to my buckets. You gonna update your bucket policy? You don't have to worry about this if you use Amplify. All right, ignore my terrible bucket names. Apologies. <laughs> Is this the bucket? Yeah, it's not public. There you go. You gotta make it public. I guess I could just go into it. There's nothing in it. Did you create this bucket with your deploy script? Uh, I don't think so. Let's actually look at your deploy Maybe script. Maybe I did. Dev null, your favorite thing. That's what I believe in. I believe in dev null. Let's see. Okay, so you get the region. You do make a bucket. Okay, I made it, yeah. What's the bucket name? But I also set it to be a website, too, so something's failing, clearly. It also didn't upload anything. I noticed. Where's the bucket name? Oh, you know what? Your, your disk, look, look, look at the error. The user provided path dist does not exist. Go look in our front end. Yeah, it didn't actually build. Weird. Very. Isn't your script called build? It sure does. npm run build. Uh, that's a good call out, Brandon. That the it definitely already existed, but uh, like the bucket already existed, but my my script will keep going. Yeah, it that. will keep going. I saw that. It's like an error that calls and then it still gets to the end. That's right. But how come the disk folder didn't create? An error failed at the Mythical Misfits build script. Hmm. Cannot find module AWS uh, exports. Ah, actually, we didn't do Amplify in it on this one. Yeah, we also have to copy over it. That's what it is. There we go. There we go. So since the build failed, we didn't get anything into that uh, bucket. And it doesn't actually mark the bucket as public. It, I believe it just does the files. Uh, but what we're missing is our Amplify exports. Yep. Because from our last episode, we used uh, 
Amplify to add Cognito, right? So you have to copy that over into your front end as well. Probably From another, module four. Correct. Probably another good call out on the tutorial. Uh, so do you have that in module four? You may not have actually. I don't think I have it. That's because you don't actually go and do the front end portions. You only care about the back end coding. I wait for you to do it. Wow. Very, very Let's be sad. completely honest. Very sad to me. That's okay. Can I just call Amplify in it? You could, but then we have to walk through creating all the Cognito stuff and everything, mm. too. It's okay. It's all right. We can go visit the... Uh, well, we won't be able to go log into AWS console and see the, the data moving. But I was going to say, the, the actual... The code in the front end just calls the API that we created and puts the record into the stream directly through the API. Yep. Right? That's, that's generally what it is. We will update that README to make sure that those things are... I clear. agree with Chuck. Ghoulies did get into the code base. Um, we'll blame it on Halloween. Some gremlins. Maybe a chud or two. Uh, do you know what chuds are? No. It's another movie. You should watch it. Cannibalistic Human you Underground like Dwellers. to my list. Chud is pretty intense. Chud, C H U D. Chud. Yeah, it's an acronym. Cannibalistic, or cannibal, humanistic underground dwellers. It's about uh, people who live in the sub in the sewers and <laughs> sounds eat like people. a great movie that I definitely want to watch. It's an eighties horror film. It's excellent. It's top quality. <laughs> Added to the list. Yeah, nobody nobody listed their favorite horror movies. Uh, or their favorite costume choice today. <laughs> Chuck got in there, uh, but it was caps. Uh, Tom Cruise is a chud. No accessories. Yeah. Uh, if you use caps on the channel, it it, ah, it scratches you. Um, well, I don't think we have time to go actually that's okay. go through the process today, but um, I think you guys get the idea. If you already have, if you already did module four, you can just copy over the files to module five, and then you can call the front end script that AM wrote. Correct. And it will work. And it might work. It wasn't my fault this time. Uh, it's often my fault. <laughs> like Oftentimes. last week. Uh, and today it was duly my fault because anything that you did wrong reflected back on me. <laughs> so before we wrap up, this is... Uh, this is our last episode. It's our last episode. It's kind of sad. Tear. It's a single tear. You don't get both. Just a single. But wait. There's more. There is more. <laughs> We will be back. We're going to come back in the new year. Date TBD. What are we going to be talking about? Yeah, definitely after reInvent. <laughs> Most likely. Won't be Most before definitely after reInvent. reInvent. Uh, uh, but you'll see us, by the way, if you tune in to reInvent. Uh, we will be on, on Twitch. On Twitch. We both are hosting uh, during reInvent. Uh, not together, necessarily. I uh, won't be dressed as Ann. Yeah, probably I'll not. be dressed as me. Okay. That's a good choice, I think. <laughs> There's only room in this choice. world for one, Alan Michael. Oh my God. Uh, so, what are we gonna uh, next season? What's what's gonna be next season? Uh, we are gonna talk about serverless. Um, in some we are capacity. In right? some capacity, we are very open to suggestions from our viewers. So tweet at us what you want to see on the next season of Live with Am and Nikki. Yeah, or Dead with Am and Nikki, or, like it is today. Or Dead with Am and Nikki. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're totally open to, to talk about more things that you are interested in. Um, Emma, thank you very much. Put in an RSVP to the next season. Oh, yeah, you can RSVP to our next season. Yeah. Find out exactly when we'll be back on the air. That's right. Um, It'll definitely be in the new year. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really fun. I'm going to miss everybody. Me too. Yeah. I'm going to miss my uh, Tall Pants fan. Tall Pants, yeah. And we got we got two we got two call outs the purge for a horror movie favorite Halloween movie. Did anyone say what their favorite costume was? Uh, everybody knows that it was me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Just glad we clarified that. Yeah. So I, I guess with that we should wrap it up. Yep. Uh, we will stand by for questions in the chat for a little bit after the show. But thank you guys for tuning in for the last six episodes. Yeah. Parting. It's such sweet sorrow. It is. God. <laughs> Poetry again. Uh, before he goes into another poem, we're going to sign off. 
I conjured Michael Myers. He's coming now. I, you know, for all of you. Memorized of hope and for, for me all of and for you. He's all here. He's coming. Is that why the lights went out? Probably, yeah. It was Michael. Michael coming back. <laughs> Anytime you recite that poem, that's when Michael comes. Michael Myers. Great. So we're you all going to die. Austin Powers, Shrek, so we're all Cat gonna in die. a Hat, Michael Myers. That Michael Myers. And we're all going to die. Wayne. How, how long do I have before he comes? Should I just like make a mad dash? Probably. Uh, they're asking for here. our Twitter handles. Um, and so <laughs> I'll post those and uh, we should say goodbye. Bye. We'll miss you. you soon. Thank you for tuning in. Go check out the tutorial.